the good old mini oil filter. Should, should be this long, right about here. It's missing almost half of it. Well, a, a good third. Yeah, that's why you gotta love the quickie lubes. No disrespect, they serve a purpose, but um, you know, for people on the go, people on in a rush. But the correct size filter can be useful to an engine. Spare tire access should not be this difficult. And I'm not even empty yet. Or I haven't even finished cleaning out yet. Uh, cheap aftermarket control arm bushings. It looks like they're separating out of the sleeve. And then you can have metal on metal contact here causing clunking over bumps. Nice. Focus. Piece of shit camera. On automatic transmissions when you try to take the um, control arm bolt out here, the front one, you'll notice it'll make contact with the transmission. I think it's in focus, not sure, can't tell. Uh, so all you gotta do is loosen these two bolts or to remove these two bolts or loosen these bolts and then the engine can swing forward. Uh, it's probably easier to replace, uh, remove these guys. Uh, sometimes these guys break because they get stuck or they seize inside the, the aluminum housing here. So these two 16 millimeters, just remove those, the engine's not gonna fall. And then you can grab the engine or transmission, pull it forward, and then this bolt will come right out. Here's a bit of an uh, annoying safety device. Uh, on modern vehicles, they have a battery disconnect, uh, or I should say, the electrical disconnect to the front of the engine uh, in an accident. Uh, so what happens is, sorry, this is the uh, battery positive terminal here, or battery clamp, and so the battery's underneath it, and then there's a couple of fuses and some wiring that hooks up, uh, or that gets power from here. This one here is the uh, stud for the big battery cable that goes to the front of the engine or, or to the front of the vehicle to the alternator and to the battery battery um, jump post under the hood uh, in an accident there is a little igniter here and uh, it's controlled by the airbag module and what it does is in an accident it blows or it it activates and it pushes up. There's a little uh, rubbing block that gets pushed up or forced up. Uh, and you can see that the fuse, that's the fuse that runs across. It got pushed up and it basically opened up. It open circuit, it open circuited it. Uh, so there's an open there now. So when this is installed, you have battery power here, 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 but there's no battery power here and the vehicle will not start. The starter does not get enough juice to start because this fuse is broken. There are different spaced windows here. And that tells the computer which cylinder is at top, that center, pretty much, or in terms of firing order. So if the, the Woodruff key is missing and this whole gear turned on the camshaft or moved on the camshaft, it's in the wrong location and that'll affect the way the engine runs. So keep that in mind. You got to make sure that little Woodruff key, that middle key is located in the camshaft so that it can hold this gear in the correct position. Yeah, no, it's definitely from yeah. clutch. Okay. Uh, yeah, even the flywheel is discolored, so. 
can't remember if I mentioned this before. Uh, relay 114, that's the low speed relay. One relay that activates both radiator fans, the driver's side and the passenger side. High speed are these two relays, relays 98. Uh, and you can easily hear them clicking when bridging the connectors, the, the pins here. Two connectors side by side. That's 114. And then the two connectors on on the outside of the connector. That's the 98s, the high speed. If your radiator fans run at full tilt shortly after you start the vehicle and the engine hasn't even warmed up yet and you have AC, disconnect this brown harness plug here from this temperature sensor. It's a, it's a green temperature sensor. That's the AC cutout thermal switch. Uh, so what happens is when the coolant temperature gets too hot, uh, this guy here will trigger the radiator fans at maximum speed and it'll turn the AC off. Just squeeze the two tabs on either side, wiggle the connector off, and as you can see, it's a green sensor. And then since it's pointing down, you will obviously lose some coolant, but uh, should be doable uh, even from up top here. Pull the connector out sideways, make sure the O-ring comes out with it, uh, let it drain until it stops, put the new sensor in with the O-ring, the new O-ring, and uh, install a new clip and make sure that it clicks into place. Two thousand seven Beetle, two point five liter engine. Uh, check engine light comes on intermittently when the AC is on. Two fault codes: uh, P nineteen fifty radiator fan V seven movement restricted, jammed intermittent. Uh, coolant, and then the other code is P zero four eighty coolant fan control circuit electrical malfunction intermittent. Um, so I was going to do output tests, but before doing output tests, I figured I'd check to see if the uh, fan free wheels or turns. So here's the engine bay and uh, you can see the fan right there. That fan does not move. I'm, gr I'm grabbing the blade and it just won't move. It's completely seized and I can smell the electrical smell, burnt smell. So that, that fan is seized up. The customer didn't say anything about um, overheating or anything like that. Uh, the beetles don't have a temperature gauge or a needle. They just have a uh, idiot light that comes on. Um, never came on supposedly or the customer never noticed or the customer failed to tell the box failed to tell the box. So he's almost done. So anyways, uh, this one's getting a fan. I'm not sure how much I'll record. Two thousand seven Jetta, two point five liter, five cylinder engine. Uh, sets runs rough, stalls. Sets about ten trouble codes. I'll I'll post them in a minute. Uh, but anyways, uh, common problem. You can see I can remove the oil cap nice and easily. Let me just put it back on. Start the car. If I can get it, the switch starts okay. I cannot remove the cap. I can't pull it off at all. 
shut it off. And it comes right off. A faulty vacuum diaphragm for the PCV. And my coworker already took it off. There's a PCV diaphragm cover right here that comes off. And then the spring comes off, or this whole this whole piece comes off. And uh, this guy here should be broken someplace. Right there. So it's just a spring-loaded diaphragm that moves up and down and allows the PCB to vent through the little hole there. And when the uh, diaphragm breaks, there's way too much suction. Charcoal canister on a Vanagon uh, on a two-wheel drive. It's on the uh, passenger side. Here's the purge valve, vacuum controlled. And those are the lines that go over to the throttle body to the intake. Okay. On the synchros, the charcoal canister is on the other side, if I remember correctly. Common source of coolant leak on these Vanagons 2.1 liters is this plastic coolant tower. Uh, this nipple here starts to degrade and uh, starts to leak. Worst case, it pops right off. Sometimes the ceiling plug pops right out. Uh, it sits in the vehicle like this, standing tall like that. Accessed from under the vehicle. Here's the little hose that connects to the little nipple, and that's the one that usually breaks. Here's the big hose. It mounts to the firewall via two uh, small screws, one here, one up there. Uh, they're accessed from the engine side, engine bay side. This hose, you just slide back on this uh, plastic coolant pipe, and then you obviously have room. There's a hose up here that connects to the side of the flange. That's this one here. Uh, and then there's one small nipple here, the air bleed in the engine bay. Fairly straightforward, uh, easy to replace. Uh, relatively speaking obviously if you're working on the ground might not so be might not be so easy uh, plus you might get coolant all over your face well that, that might still happen even uh, when working on under a hoist <laughs>